hello everyone i hope you all are doing well so today in this video i am going to share in detail about my jncsr uh, interview experience for integrated phd program in biological science now jncsr jawaharlal nehru center for advanced scientific research is a very well known uh, research institute located in bangalore uh, for biological science uh, you have to first qualify the iit jam exam with good rank Uh, based on the jam rank you will be shortlisted for the jncs or mock test now after you qualify the mock test you will receive a uh, interview call letter uh, for integrated phd program uh, this year they shortlisted around 40 students for integrated phd interview and after that they selected 10 students for integrated phd program uh, thankfully i also been selected i have been selected for integrated phd program at jncsr although i will not be joining jncsr but i have been selected this is a good thing now uh, i will discuss in detail about the jncsr mock test in later videos uh, now uh, jncsr also provide a different course for uh, msc in interdisciplinary biosciences for that course there is no separate mock test uh, you have only to um, submit the application based on your jam rank and only based on your rank you will receive a uh, interview call for uh, that program msc in interdisciplinary biosciences and uh, after you qualify the um, interview uh, you will be shortlisted for the program now uh, uh, they as i have mentioned they uh, shortlisted around 40 students for the integrated phd interview the problem is they don't mention the particular slot for the integrated phd interview interview they have, they generally mention that uh, all the candidates have to be present um, sharp at 9 am in the morning so uh, around the 40 students were there and all of them arrived around 9 am in the morning but the interview was continued almost till uh, 6 pm in the evening so some has to wait for 7 to 8 hours for their interview this is a very problem i think and they should uh, at least mention either in the morning slot or afternoon slot but they don't mention and this is a very big problem now as i entered the room uh i have also filled the application uh, there was a big screen and there my application was displaying and uh, everyone was watching uh, watching at my application and in the panel there was around 8 to 9 people in my panel but uh, all of them don't ask you questions uh, only two to three people may be asking you questions but but other will be there others will be there for observing you and making you nervous right uh, and they first ask me uh, who on which topic i am most comfortable comfortable with uh, i told that i like topics like molecular biology cell biology uh, biochemistry and uh, then one faculty was there he asked in biochemistry what topic do you like most i told that in uh, biochemistry i like protein chemistry amino acids then he told me actually they asked me like basic questions and very easy questions they don't didn't ask me uh, like very tough questions but uh, i faced a different difficulty i am uh, coming to it now uh, that faculty asked me how many amino acids are there i told that generally Uh, there are 20 amino acids but uh, there are two additional amino acid uh, 20 standard amino acid and two additional amino acid selenium cysteine and pyrolysine uh, then he asked that i am uh, just uh, talking about this uh, 20 standard amino acid now, now can you draw the structure of glycine and uh, tyrosine in the board uh, then i draw the structure of glycine and tyrosine uh, then Uh, he asked me uh, can you name the covalent bond which are present between amino acids i told that yeah uh, this is peptide bond uh, and it is present between the amino acid then he told me uh, tell me few characteristics characteristics of peptide bond um, i told that peptide bond is a partial double bond it shows restricted rotation and there is a different torsion angle value psi and phi values based on this we get the ramachandran plot Uh, this is an endergonic reaction and tab unhone bola ki mujhe endergonic ke bare mein utna zyada nahi malum hai ye mat bolo then i stopped and then he told that like uh, suppose you have a protein uh, and 
यू हैव इनफ अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन एंड ना उस उसके पहले उन्होंने पूछा कि लाइक कैन यू नेम द एंजाइम व्हिच इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ब्रेकिंग द बॉन्ड्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट बिटवीन द एमिनो एसिड्स लाइक व्हिच एंजाइम ब्रेक द पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड्स आई टोल्ड दैट लाइक प्रोटीएज और पेप्टाइड एज इज द एंजाइम व्हिच ब्रेक्स द बॉन्ड पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड देन देन ही टोल्ड मी टू नेम फ्यू प्रोटीएज आई टोल्ड दैट ट्रिप्सिन और पेपाइन दीज आर द प्रोटीएजेस देन आई वॉज थिंकिंग कि दे विल बी आस्किंग मी द क्लीवेज साइड ऑफ दीज एंजाइम्स बट दे डिडेंट आस्क मी देन ही टोल्ड दैट सपोज यू हैव ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन एंड यू आर गिवन ए प्रोटियोलाइटिक एंजाइम और पेप्टाइडेज देन कैन यू ड्रॉ द कार्व ऑफ हाउ द Like basically, they were asking me to draw the enzyme kinetics curve, and I drawn the uh, curve in the standard enzyme kinetics, like uh, the hyperbolic curve. Then, the, then they told me to uh, write the equation. Then I wrote the Michaels-Winton equation in the board. Uh, v not equal to v max into s by k m plus s. Then they told me to write the meaning of each of the terms. Uh, I told them. Then uh, he asked me, like, if you have Uh, unlimited amount of the substrate then why the plateau portion of the curve like the curve should ever increase right then why are you making this plateau portion uh, then i told that uh, i have unlimited amount of substrate but the enzyme is limited right and therefore after a certain time all the active sites will be filled by the uh, by the substrates and Uh, no active sites will be left so eventually the uh, rate of reaction will be will be gradually stop increasing then he told that okay so uh, what is that point called like the maximum reaction occurring at that particular point what is the name of that point i told that this is called v max or maximum velocity then uh, he told If I say to say to increase the Vmax, so what change you will uh, perform in the reaction? I told that if I increase the enzyme concentration, then the Vmax will increase. Uh, then he told that okay. Um, uh, do you know there are uh, different kind of inhibitors? Uh, I told that yeah, there are um, inhibitors like um, uncompetitive, non-competitive, or con- competitive inhibitors. Then he asked me. Uh, In case of no uncompetitive inhibitors, what changes occur to the substrate? I told that uh, in case of uncompetitive inhibitors, the Vmax decreases and Km value also decreases. Uh, then he told that Km value decreases. मतलब ये तो कुछ ठीक नहीं लग रहा है ना मतलब Km value is the representative of substrate affinity and lower Km value represents higher affinity. Uh, so You are uh, you are telling that the substrate affinity is increased after applying the inhibitor. I said yes, sir. The substrate affinity is increased uh, because uh, the binding side of the substrate and the inhibitor is uh, mostly the same side. And after the inhibitor binds, it prevents the substrate from dissociating from the enzyme, and that's why the substrate cannot dissociate. And indirectly, uh, the its affinity, the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate increases. And he said, okay. so i all then uh, another question was there in case of peptides or proteases uh, he asked me what is the nature of the enzyme then asked me nature matlab aap kya puch rahe ho mujhe samajh nahi aa raha then uh, he told ki uh, what is the type of the enzyme oxidoreductase or transferase or what i told that oh it it actually catalyzes the cleavage of the peptide bond by using water so uh, it should be a hydrolase Uh, then he asked, "It should be. मतलब are you confident or not?" I said that, "Yeah, th- this is protease. Uh, I think this is uh, a uh, hydrolase enzyme." Mm, then uh, that faculty asked me these questions, and after that, uh, in my major, in my B.Sc, I had zoology. Right now, there was another faculty, uh, and ma'am, she was a ma'am, and uh, he. Told me that you had zoology in your major, right? I said yes, ma'am. I had zoology in my major, but I at I I forgot almost everything, and uh, I forgot almost everything of classical zoology and that um, classification things. Uh, right now, I am fully blank of it. 
then um, he told me that i will ask you some basic questions this is basically plus 2 level question uh, 10 plus 2 level question and you will be able to answer it then i said yes ma'am okay ma'am then he told me uh, can you um, tell me different uh, difference between quadrate and uh, non quadrate i said yes in case of quadrate like there are uh, vertebrate and invertebrate i said yes in case of and there is this vertebral column there is brain and spinal cord but in case of invertebrate that is not present uh, then he asked me can you mm, say me example of invertebrate i said ma'am cockroach cockroach is an arthropod and this is invertebrate then he told me what is how is the nervous system of cockroach i told that it is generally ventrally located and uh, present in the form of nerve plexus um, like uh, uh, like we have a distinguished brain and spinal cord but in case of cockroach this is a diffuse system therefore if we cut out the head of the cockroach it will, it will still be able to survive but eventually die kyunki kyunki usko khana nahi milega to mar jayega mar jayega but um, uh, it will be it will not be instantly died like if we cut the head of a human being it will immediately die right but in, not in the case of insects then uh, he told that but uh, agar hum jo chicken hai chicken ka jo head uh, cut karte to uh, oh to immediately uh, uh, it uh, doesn't die right uh, it like thoda time lagta hai oh hath pair jo hai matlab movement still occurs uh, and uh, and she told that so this is not a good difference then i said that yeah uh, then he told me some uh, question from the digestive system of uh, different phylum and classes but i forgot all those things and i told her ma'am i currently uh, don't remember that things and i forgot that things then uh, he uh, then another faculty was there and uh, he told me like uh, have you read developmental biology i said uh, yes sir i read developmental biology mm, then uh, he told me do you know the germ layers i said yes ectoda mesoderm and endoderm and then uh, he asked me uh, which germ layer is formed first and which is second which is third and then he uh, uh, asked me uh, like exam- example of organs which are derived derived from ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and i told like brain is ectodermal in origin and for mesoderm i told testis and ovary and endoderm i initially forgot but then told like kidney and other organs internal organs are endodermal in origin and uh, these these were basically the questions they asked me uh, to be honest the first portion the biochemistry and enzyme kinetics portion i almost answer all the questions but when the topic was changed to classical zoology and these things i just at least like 50 50 i answered half the questions but half questions i could not answer uh, and i told at the very beginning that ma'am i forgot these things and uh, i will not be able to answer uh, and uh, i was not sure about whether i will be selected or not but uh, they selected me uh, and i think uh, they don't judge the things you don't know um, they will judge you if from the things you know and you will say that uh, this is my topic of interest this is my strong point and you should have a good grip on your strength and that will be enough now that was all about my interview uh, i will discuss in detail about their hostel facilities their research works uh, their fellowship amount they provide uh their program duration all things in detail uh, from the offer letter they send me so thank you very much for your patience and support thank you